Hi everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of the Boca Chica launch site as of early June 2021. All of the following photos and videos were captured by NASA Spaceflight team members Mary and Jack Beyer, as well as our team of robotic cameras. The entire Boca Chica facility, also known as Starbase, is buzzing with activity as SpaceX presses towards its next goal, an orbital flight of Starship. Work on the orbital launch site is moving full steam ahead, while production on individual Starships has slowed dramatically. SpaceX closed the book on suborbital Starship testing with the successful 10-kilometer launch and landing of Starship SN15 on May 5th. Even though one of the three Raptor engines seemed to fail to reignite for landing, the remaining two engines were more than enough to safely land the vehicle. Following its landing, SN15 was moved to Pad B on May 14th. SpaceX may have performed some light testing on the vehicle, but no tank testing or static fires were performed. Its three Raptor engines were then removed on May 21st and shipped out of Boca Chica a few days later. It's likely that the three Raptor engines were sent back to SpaceX's test facility in McGregor, Texas to be inspected and retested. And who knows, if they're in good shape, maybe we'll see them refly someday. SN15 was removed from Pad B on May 26th. It was then mounted onto a display stand towards the back of the production site as a monument to the progress Starship has made in the past years. Since suborbital Starship flights are likely over, SpaceX has paused all work on the remaining non-orbit capable vehicles. In addition, the suborbital launch site seems to have become a staging area for orbital launch site construction. Starship SN16 is fully stacked in the high bay, though missing the aerodynamic covers on its aft flaps. Nothing has happened with 16 recently, and given that SpaceX doesn't seem to want to do any more suborbital flights, we may see SN16 be scrapped soon to clear up room in the high bay. SN17 is in the process of being scrapped. We saw SpaceX stack two sections of 17's tanks, before halting assembly, and eventually moving those pieces to the scrapyard. The test tank SN7.2 was moved to the scrapyard recently as well. Starship SN20 has been making recent progress. Several parts of the vehicle have been spotted, including the aft dome. Attachment points for the three Raptor vacuum engines have been spotted, meaning that SN20 will be the first vehicle to feature the engines. Parts for Starships SN21 and SN22 have been spotted, although it seems like the focus is mainly on SN20 as well as the ground support equipment tanks. Speaking of the ground support equipment or GSE tanks, three of the seven have been fully completed, while the fourth is in the process of being assembled. Two tanks have been moved to the orbital launch site already. Mary spotted one ring stack for GSE tank number seven, meaning that they're almost done producing the individual sections. Rather than buying a large number of smaller off-the-shelf tanks, SpaceX is building these tanks themselves using existing Starship designs and parts. The tanks are essentially short Starships with one internal tank, rather than two. Each tank will then be covered by a shell to insulate it. The shells are currently being assembled at the old gas well site, which is also home to the propellant production site. The remaining GSE tanks will be installed at the Starship orbital launch site, where they'll hold liquid oxygen, liquid methane, and liquid nitrogen for orbital Starship and Super Heavy flights. SpaceX is also moving full speed ahead on completing the new orbital launch site. The launch tower is now three sections high, with five left to go. The launch tower will be used to stack Starships and Super Heavy boosters on the orbital launch pad, and will later literally catch returning Super Heavy boosters to be reused. Once completed, it'll be the tallest structure in South Texas by far, standing 143 meters, or 470 feet, tall. The giant crane being used to stack the tower, nicknamed Franken Crane by the SpaceX team for its mismatched colors, is currently being extended to allow it to reach the upper sections of the tower. The orbital launch mount itself is also progressing, with crews installing extensions onto the six existing pillars. The circular launch table will sit on top of these. SpaceX is currently targeting the first orbital Starship launch with Super Heavy BN3 and Starship SN20 for sometime late this summer. BN3 is currently being stacked in the high bay next to Starship SN16. 
it's currently at about half of its final 70 meter height. BN3 will be the first flight-capable Super Heavy booster built, following the more stripped-down BN1 test article. The setup of the propellant tanks has switched between the two boosters. BN3's methane tank is on top, and its oxygen tank is on the bottom, while BN1 was the exact opposite. BN3 is expected to have a full batch of 29 Raptor engines installed for its flight. A Super Heavy center engine mount, with 9 attachment points, was recently spotted being unloaded. Also, a propellant manifold, likely with 29 pipes, was sighted too. This will supply the liquid methane to each of the Raptor engines on a future Super Heavy booster. In order to test the brand new engine mount without risking a complete booster, SpaceX built BN 2.1, a subscale test tank. This six ring tall tank features a complete Super Heavy engine mount, a short barrel section, and an ordinary forward dome. It's mounted on the same stand that the nose cone test article was, which will simulate the forces of all engines firing on the bottom of the booster. BN 2.1 was moved to the launch site on June 3rd, and currently resides near the suborbital launch site. The nose cone test article, essentially the top half of Starship SN12, was moved back to the production site after completing testing. The test cell was removed from the nose cone on May 12th inside the high bay, and the nose cone was scrapped over the next few weeks. The test cell itself has been moved to the back of the production site for storage, near where SN15 is displayed. Part of the old gas well site has been repurposed into building infrastructure for the orbital launch site. Sections of the launch tower, as well as the shells for the GSE tanks, are being fabricated there. The propellant production plant, which will create liquid oxygen from the atmosphere, is also progressing towards completion. On the front end of the gas well site, a new starbase sign was installed, with blue lights around it. A large array of solar panels was installed along the wall behind it, further expanding the solar footprint of the Boca Chica site. And that's it for this video. If you have any feedback, be sure to leave it in the comments below. This helps us make every new video even better than the last one. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing or becoming a channel member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a great week. Thank you.